Hello there. Hello. Good, uh, good morning, everybody. So um, uh, I'll be talking about uh, Express Marine, which is a, a Rhino plugin. I will, of course, present it uh, briefly. Uh, and we, we, we found uh, Express Marine to be an interesting uh, 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 preprocessor, uh, structural preprocessor to ship constructor. Okay. Uh, my name is Stefan Dardel. I'm working with uh, Nick Danese for, for quite a while. Uh, taking care of uh, the software that uh, we also distribute around the uh, ship constructor. We have software, we, you of course know us, I believe. We have software for stability, for resistance and propulsion, for uh, structural engineering, uh, and, and so on. Okay. Um, so just jump to the next uh, slide. Um, Express Marine is uh, therefore a Rhinoceros uh, plugin. We like Rhino. We have also the Orcas Ready, which is another plugin that does hull design and uh, preliminary stability. And uh, what do we do with Express Marine inside the uh, friendly Rhino environment? We, um, uh, we do a parametr uh, parametrical structural model, uh, 3D model. Uh, parametric means that it's uh, flexible, that you can modify it, you can update it, because it lives on parameters. The hull form is one parameter. The frame spacing is another parameter, and so on, and that can evolve uh, throughout your uh, design process. Okay, um, and what do you output from uh, Express Marine? It works uh, quickly. Uh, day one, you already uh, you are already able to output uh, data. Uh, first thing that you will uh, output from your Express Marine model is uh, some extensive weight data, all structural parts, whether they are stiffeners, they are. Frames or uh, shell plates have a thickness, uh, have a material, so, and of course have a position in space, so they have a, a weight and center of gravity, but furthermore, they, have also, uh, they also have an inertia and uh, all kinds of data that inter interest the uh, naval architect for stability, sea keeping, and so on. Uh, you also uh, output day one some uh, preliminary bills of materials, so how many meters squared of plate five millimeter, how many kilometers of stiffener of that scantling do I have? And you also export, well, you, saw, so you output uh, an accurate 3D surface CAD model. Uh, what do I mean by accurate? It's, a, it's actually a model that, uh, where the, uh, the intersection between parts is, is accurate, uh, meaning that, uh, because of course, by essence, uh, to have a, a frame intersecting with a shell plate, uh, it has to be an, an exact intersection. An exact intersection means that uh, it can also be used uh, for meshing, for, uh, for example, for FE calculations. So those are the three, uh, let's say, uh, disciplines that uh, Express Marine will help to trigger. So um, structural modeling, uh, weight uh, engineering, so I mentioned the ship weight because um, Express Marine is developed by uh, Boss Engineering in uh, Norway who are also the developers of uh, Shipweight, and we have the chance to have them in the room here today. Uh, and the last one, it's the one I will uh, try to develop with you just now. It's about uh, a uh, being a 3D preprocessor for ship constructor and uh, uh, detailed uh, production modeling. Uh, before I go, I would like to do it uh, kind of a live demo, but I would like just to, to present briefly uh, what is Express Marine and how it uh, uh, works. Um, so I will just uh, go now to a pro, uh, software screen. So that, that's what it looks like. Uh, most, uh, some of you, most of you, sorry. Oh. Yeah. Why that? I don't know. Should I try to reset the uh, connection? Okay, sorry about that. Um, so this is a, a Rhino screen. Uh, some of you, most of you, may be familiar with it. Uh, your, uh, let's say, your usual, your friendly uh, Rhino environment, to which we add this uh, project screen, this Express Marine project screen. And without going into the details, uh, I would just like to take the example of one uh, one structural element that I see in this. Uh, in this model, I will just pick, uh, uh, for example, this uh, piece of frame. Uh, it's part of a series of frames, so I have defined that according to a, a frame spacing. 
and uh, if I examine uh, the, the parameters for this uh, frame, okay, just this one, I will perhaps take the series of them. Uh, it's a series of frames um, going every, every one frame, uh, starting at frame 19, up the, all the way to frame 46, uh, with some exceptions. But then there is a thickness 5 millimeter, it's aluminum, and then it's bound by uh, some, uh, some uh, longitudinal structure, okay? Uh, this one will uh, be, this piece of frame, this piece of floor, sorry, would be bound by uh, a girder, a logical girder, and by the uh, shell plating on port side. And vertically, it's also bound to the, uh, let's say, to the tank top, okay? So that's how you define that, you define your, your structure. It's parametric, that means that you can change any one of those parameters at any moment. And the one uh, typical example I will show you in a minute is update your uh, hull form and you can recalculate your internal structure uh, kind of uh, immediately. And also you can define some uh, uh, lightning holes and some uh, stiffness. So you have different methods to, to define uh, lightning holes. I won't get into that detail here, but you see again parameters. Uh, this, uh, the, the top uh, web is 200 millimeter thick, uh, sorry, high, and so on. Okay, so that's what it looks like, and you develop very rapidly uh, a 3D model, and that's only uh, the beginning of it here. Okay, but uh, and that uh, now I would like to show you how do you get started because you start from uh, from, from 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 the beginning. Um, I will just uh, open uh, this uh, other uh, Rhino window, uh, just to say that we it all starts with a hull surface or hull surfaces. This one, for example, is composed of uh, four surfaces all together. There's one bottom, there's one, uh, let's say, uh, spray rail and one top side, and then there's this uh, half bit here. This is, uh, by the way, this is a uh, fast uh, aluminum fast ferry, 115 meter, that was built uh, about uh, 20 years ago. So it's, it's an old file, but that's what, uh, something we did with uh, what was ship constructor at the time uh, with, with Nick, so it's, uh, uh, we, we, we know this uh, ship uh, pretty well. Okay, so it's, it all starts with, with this, uh, this whole form, okay? I will open yet another uh, Rhino uh, session in which I will create my uh, Express Marine model. So let's, let's just do it. <coughs> okay, it's, well, you, you, you're meant to input some, uh, some principal dimensions. I think I will just uh, go through that quickly. Uh, let's make it 100 meter. This one can be 11 meter. Uh, I will stick to four decks. And it's essentially aluminum, so I will set my default scantling to aluminum 5 millimeter. Okay, it opens my Express Marine window, in which I can just uh, define my first thing, probably to define my uh, framing system. Sorry. And then uh, for that case, uh, it's, uh, the framing system is 1.5 meter frame spacing, uh, longitudinally. You can also define transversally and vertically, so along the three axes, but uh, we'll just keep that for the sake of our presentation today. Okay, that's done. And then I'm, I'm, I'm good uh, to actually import uh, the, uh, the whole surface. And always, you are in the uh, Rhino environment, so it's also a combination of Rhino commands in a very broad sense and Express Marine uh, tools. And I will import the shell plating on port side. That would be this one. So I'm, I'm, I'm essentially importing another Rhino file. We support IGS, we support Rhino format. And then I will just say, uh, I will say that my uh, shell plating is uh, 10 millimeter throughout. Again, for the sake of the presentation, I won't go into that detail, but of course you can create seams so you can have different plate thicknesses uh, along the, the girth of the vessel. Okay, but uh, at this point, let's, let's stay uh, global. Okay, uh, I have defined that, so you can see it, it does both the port side and the starboard side because I've defined a symmetrical uh, context, and I already have uh, a weight and the center of gravity for this uh, shell plating, okay? And then I will just go to create a, a deck, okay? 
Okay. Uh, but by, by the way, you may notice that this uh, hierarchy uh, is prepared by Express Marine. You don't need to go and define that. It's, so it's suggested and prepared by, uh, by the software. Okay. I will just go and create uh, a deck, okay, which I will set at the altitude of 3.4 meter. Uh, thickness 5, aluminium, that's, that's okay. Uh, I will set it longitudinally going from x equals 0 to uh, x equal frame uh, 61. Okay? And then transversely, it will, bound, uh, it will be bound by the shell starboard to the shell port side because those shell platings are uh, now into uh, the parametrical model. So I can use them as intersections. Shell uh, piece. Then I can just say apply. Uh, yeah, sorry, this is just a slight syntax error of mine. It's not this one, it's. Uh, like, no. What's happening with my keyboard? Yeah, one. And then I will just apply. Before I do apply, I just want to reduce slightly the, uh, the window so that you can see at the back. By the way, uh, good idea to have more than one screen. You see uh, this Express Marine window is large enough that uh, it's probably a good idea to have at least two screens to, to work. Uh, that, but it's probably something that you are used to anyway. So this is now my deck, and it's parametric because then it's easy to come back and change, for example, the altitude or the longitudinal extent of it. Okay. I will just temporarily uh, I will make invisible the uh, starboard uh, shell plate just to see through the model, and then I will uh, create some uh, floors. Uh, which perhaps I will call that the uh, watertight bulkheads because I mean here to be doing some. Let's say some principle element. I don't mean to be, uh, let's say, uh, precise, not, not precise in the sense, I don't want to be uh, doing something uh, exact and definitive. Uh, it's only a starting point. So those things will change. First one that will change potentially is the whole form, but at least I can lay out the structure in this way. So I'm doing some uh, watertight bulkheads every five frames, uh, starting at frame uh, 12 all the way to 57. Thickness will be five aluminum, that's good. Uh, again, bound by the uh, shell on starboard side and the shell on port side. This is for the, uh, for the transversal direction. Okay, and uh, vertically, I also want uh, to, bound this, uh, to bind this, uh, those watertight bulkheads to my deck, so uh, vertically I select uh, deck one, plane, okay? And then I can just uh, say apply. And my uh, frames are being created, okay? Now, uh, that's interesting because I have this uh, 3D model, it took me uh, a minute, it will take you two, two, two minutes the first time that you use Express Marine, of course, but it's very quick. And now what do I do with that? Because I'm interested to, uh, to feed uh, the guys working with the ship constructor model. They are starting to lay out some equipment, some GA. They perhaps will be happy to benefit of this work that I've, I've been doing. So uh, now I will switch to, uh, to the ship constructor. I will save uh, this complete model in a Rhino format, or I can save portion of it. I'm interested at this point to export only uh, the deck and the, uh, those a watertight bulkhead that I just uh, designed. So let me just export those elements. So those are uh, native uh, Rhino elements. So I can just pick them up. And then file, export, standard Rhino uh, dialog. And I will call that my uh, TMV uh, bulkheads. This is a 3DM file. Now I can open my uh, ship constructor window. Okay, I've already set up my project, so I'm, I'm at the moment in the unit drawing. Okay, so I won't go into that detail, uh, but essentially uh, I will just load uh, this uh, 3DM model. So 
So AutoCAD is able to read directly uh, 3DM formats. So this is the one. It's done. It's there, so we can recognize exactly the same uh, piece of information as we have in Reno, Express Marine, so it's the same, uh, same everything, really. Okay, now um, my, what I'm interested in is to create uh, some planar groups. Uh, one for the deck and perhaps one for the, uh, all the frames, but then that's down to your organization and how you are used to work. I'm not, I don't mean to change anything in the way you work. Uh, I just will create uh, with you um, a planar group just to illustrate the purpose. So I will, for that, uh, I will just create a line that starts from zero, zero. Uh, and then I will uh, make a planar group out of this line. Uh, like create planar group, I will pick this line. And just for the sake of organization, I will put that uh, into a, a, a frame planar group, okay, which I can call bulkheads. I, in, I intend to put all my bulkheads in it uh, just to avoid having many files, but then again, that's down to your organization, the way you are used to work with chip constructor. You may have different approaches to that, okay? And then what I will do is I will pick those bulkheads and simply copy-paste them into my planar group, which will be this one here. Just, uh, I will go directly to a uh, uh, perspective view. Okay, uh, just very importantly, there's something to do uh, to, uh, to handle the uh, UCSs because uh, when you do copy-paste uh, between files in, uh, in AutoCAD, uh, it is according to the UCS. So the UCS was in, the, uh, in the unit was the world UCS. So I'll use the, uh, I will define the world UCS here too so that uh, the pasting is made in the, re in the same uh, referential. Is it set to world now? Okay, and then I can do uh, control V, and then, okay, uh, why I? Stefan, you have yes. about a, a minute. Excuse me? You have about a minute. Uh, okay, so yeah. I'd better be quick then. Okay, um, okay, zero. Okay, so that's it, uh, that's done. And now I can use the Shape Constructor tools to actually, well, you can tell that uh, you get your, your frames here. You know, I can, I'll be very quick here. Uh, you can actually create a part of it, out of it because this contour is meant to be exact, okay? So first thing that I will do is I will define a UCS in the way of, uh, of uh, the part. Uh, use the command, uh, uh, the Shape Constructor command, activate UCS, okay? Uh, activate from object, mm -hmm. all right. And then I can just uh, use uh, AutoCAD command, which is called X edge, that will actually output the edges of this, uh, this uh, surface. If I just uh, delete it for the sake of it. Then there's a couple of manipulation I need to do because this is a spline, so I need to turn that into a polyline. Okay, uh, yes, and then that's fine. And then I also need to, uh, to uh, flatten that into the UCS because it's a 3D polyline that needs to be turned into a 2D polyline to create the toolpath. Uh, Did I do it now? Uh, properties. It's a polyline. Uh, am I able to create a part now? I'm not sure I did the, uh, yeah. No, I, I need to do the SC conversion to convert that into a 2D polyline. Okay. And then I'm able, uh, like you are used to do it, uh, to create a, a ship constructor part. So now this part belongs to the database. So I can uh, use it as a standard ship constructor element. I can do 
Uh, I can do um, a crash detection with it. I can uh, regis I mean, it, it has all the attributes that you expect from a, from a structural uh, part. So you, you will now interact with the rest of the team working with the ship constructor, laying, laying out systems, GAs, uh, interiors, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time. I will just uh, sorry about that. I will just mention that uh, it's a parametric model. No, I, don't, I think I'm really uh, running out of time, but essentially what I wanted to illustrate back into the Rhino model, I want to change my, uh, my model. So there's a new iteration of the whole surface because the team in the Naval Architecture Department has made some modifications. I will just, for the sake of it, I will just make a very rough uh, stretch uh, transversally of the, of the same model. Save as, um, I, will, I will call this one uh, stretched. Okay, and then back in my express marine model, the one that we, uh, we were using earlier, I will just simply re-inject this new hull model. I will browse and I will pick this new stretched 3DM. I apply it and then, uh, well, hopefully you can see that it's not the same one. You see that the floors are disconnected no big deal, I will just go and update because the definition as such didn't change. They're always bound by the same uh, boundaries. So I will only need to pick them. So I will just pick this one, for example, and pick the whole series of them. And then I can just say apply to recalculate this uh, structure, you see? Okay, so Really, again, parametric means flexible. Means that uh, day one you can start to uh, to feed the rest of your team with some uh, valuable data, and uh, while they start their own work, you can keep on developing your your uh, Express Marine model. I think that's what I wanted to uh, to say. So uh, thank you. Uh, hope you enjoyed it.